Hi everybody and welcome back to Art with Mrs. S. Today we're going to be doing some watercolor painting and using page 66 and 67 of your Davis digital textbook. So today I have my water cup, I have a paintbrush or two and something to set my water cup on. I have nice thick white drawing paper and then I also have my watercolor paint palette and a paper towel. So to get started today, I'm going to read on page 66, a story setting. Sometimes artists let colors run together. The colors mix and make fuzzy edges. A painting can make us think of a story setting. What shapes and colors do you see in image A? What kind of story might happen here? So I'm seeing lots of blobs. It looks like maybe something that might have water or um, maybe some animals or people swimming together, but you might see something else in image A. And then you also have image B. Look at image B. Um, could this be a setting for a story? I'm looking at the title. It's called a spring bank. So it could be something along the water. There could be rocks or could be plants. It's more abstract. So if you're someone who likes things clean and organized and perfectly even or a nice straight edge, this may not be the project for you, but you might be able to have fun with it and explore. And half the fun is um, making those edges kind of blend together. So I'm gonna show you how to do this today. And I'm looking on page 67, it says a story setting. Use your paintbrush, mix different colors and paint in a make-believe story setting. Paint on wet paper and let the colors run together. See the fuzzy edges. So a setting, you can make something with water, you could do just trees or a forest, you could even do a city, or you might have your setting just be in the sky. So kind of think about what your setting is first, and then we're gonna go ahead and start experimenting, okay? I think today I would like to add a, um, I'm gonna do kind of a water setting, and I might see some things like rocks, or I might see plants, but um, it is gonna run together and get kind of messy, so you may not see those shapes or forms, but that way you know kind of what I have in mind as I'm starting to paint today. So this is a wet on wet technique. So you wanna actually get your brush really, really soaked first. So if you have a little bigger brush at home, and I'm just going to act like I'm painting the paper, but it's just with water. So I'm gonna fill most of my paper so it's nice and saturated. Sometimes um, artists make the mistake of just doing a really big area, not a lot of water. And then by the time you get your color on that water, on that paper, it's dried. So really, really get it gooey. I'm not pressing hard though, just enough that the whole surface of my paper is covered in water. Now, normally we'd be doing this next step first. So we get our brush wet and go to our color, but now our paper is all gooey and gross and has a layer of water. And now I'm gonna add my brush. So now you can see when I do this wet on wet technique, my colors, they're going to kind of go around randomly. There's not a lot of control to this kind of style. They're going to mesh together. They're gonna to be more fluid because they're kind of laying in this layer of water and they're going to blend together a lot more easily than if we just had a dry piece of paper. Look at that beautiful color. I don't have any with me today, but if you wanna get really creative while your paper's still wet and your colors are still wet, you can put just a little bit of salt on this and see your colors really um, create kind of a really nice pattern. You can see how they're blending together. I don't have a lot of control of where they're going a little bit more. I told you my settings kind of water, could be um, an ocean, it could be partly sky, could have a little grass alongside it or sand. Just kind of watch and enjoy the colors mixed together today. I'm gonna do more blue. I really like that blue. Look how cool that is. Watch it. Kind of reminds me of tie-dye. And as you can see here, I put a paper under my paper. I always do that. Um, that's just so that it kind of keeps the mess controlled or contained a little bit. I would not use computer paper with this project. It won't be thick enough to hold all this water. If you have watercolor paper at home, that's even better to hold more of that water. Trying not to create huge puddles still because I don't want those giant puddles on my art. This might be an artwork where you keep some white space because over time those colors are going to blend together more 
kind of looks like marbled. A little more purple in here. You can see the areas where I had more water on my paper, where I had more time to soak into the paper than others. Just kind of going through and touching up some areas, trying to get a little more control on those, spreading out some of those big puddles. This is where your paper towel comes in handy too. So if you want to, I kind of like when it dries in this marble kind of style, you can kind of squish your paper towel up and gently dab your painting and it'll soak up some of that extra water. All right. Now today you'll want to take a picture of this when you're all done, but be careful. Leave it flat until it's completely dry. So if you need to wait a little bit to take a picture, or if you want to take a picture with your camera pointed downwards on the table, that's fine today too. But of course, don't forget to post that picture with your first and last name and classroom teacher. Thanks for joining me today. I can't wait to see all of these paintings and these story settings. If you don't have watercolor paint, you should have one in that art kit if you picked one up at Haley Elementary. You can also still call the office. We have lots of kits left over. If you need to go pick one up, we can get you hooked up and taken care of. If you don't have watercolor, um, you can try this out with other things like crayon or marker or colored pencil. Watercolor markers like these, you can do this with, if you wanna um, put them on the paper and then add just water to it, you could try that as well. But I don't really recommend that. I'd rather you experiment with the actual watercolors. Thanks again for joining me today. Can't wait to see your story settings.